Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, but it's going to be something that I haven't done in a little while, and I mentioned it sometime in the past, and it's been in demand, and people have been wanting me to do it ever since I mentioned it, and that is going to be a building on budget segment for World Chalice, making a budget World Chalice deck as good as I can possibly make it, so that you can potentially build this deck from scratch, take it to locals, build upon it, do all that sort of stuff. So what I've got for you today is an $80 budgeted World Chalice deck profile. Now, it's actually essentially a $50 deck, but there is one card at the end of the deck list in the extra deck that was a $30 card that making the deck as good as I could possibly make it and make it something that you could use to actually like win locals, get OTS packs, get store credit or whatever to build upon this deck with, I couldn't really justify not playing that card, so it bumped it from a $50 deck up to an $80 deck. So $80 was as little as I could make it cost to make it still good and buildable upon by, like I said, winning OTS packs and trading and getting store credit from locals and stuff like that. But otherwise, what I did was I posted a little while ago, a little while ago, actually multiple months ago, I'm losing track of time, on my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page, a poll asking people what their idea of, if you're starting completely from scratch, what is a good budget for you to build a deck from, from scratch? I says, under 50 what you're looking for, $60, $70, $80, $90, anything under 100 or is 100 acceptable? And people, basically the majority were between 70 to $80. So if you're building a deck from scratch, I understand you may not have that kind of money, but if you're building a complete deck trying to win locals or some sort of comparable tournament with that sort of money, 80 seems to be what people are willing to spend as far as building a deck completely from scratch. But a lot of these combos are also bulk commons that cost less than quarters, so if you have friends or know people that have these cards just lying around, they'll probably just give them to you, so you can shave price off there, and there's definitely a lot you could do to build upon this deck with later as far as cheap investments and stuff like that. But with that out of the way, I'm just going to get straight into this deck profile. Uh, all the prices are TCG players lowest price or lowest market price of these cards. Uh, at the time of me making this video, and instead of just saying what the price of each card is on uh, when I put them down, I'm just going to have them up in the top of the screen, uh, so you can uh, judge your uh, you can judge your budget from there essentially. But anyway, deck list is 40 cards. Starts out with three Lee the World Chalice Fairy and three World Legacy World Chalice. Obviously, you would definitely be playing max copies of these cards because they're like the best cards in your deck. Uh, and then three copies of World Chalice Guard Dragon. Uh, this card is basically your pseudo hand trap. It does do things in certain matchups. It's very good in the Pendulum Magician matchup if you're playing a local that has some of those around. Very good in the ABC matchup as well if you're, again, playing a local with those kind of uh, decks running around. But otherwise, like, you would just want to max out on these cards anyway, even a, a competitive build, because you want to see them the, as much as you can. Uh, specifically, Lee in the World Legacy World Chalice, but this is also an extender when it's engraved, so that gives you value there as well. Uh, but carrying on, I'm actually playing three of every single World Chalice vanilla, and so that means I'm playing every World Chalice monster in the game as well. Now, the reason for this is that because this is a budget deck, it doesn't have Brilliant Fusion in it. Brilliant Fusion is definitely one of the things you would play if you wanted this deck to be more competitively viable. And if you started adding things like Brilliant Fusion or the Kaiju Package or whatever, you would start shaving out vanillas appropriately. You would take out Crowned first, because Crowned is the worst one. Then you would take out Beckoned, because that's the second worst one. And then you would uh, then you'd leave Chosen uh, and start working out uh, from there, depending on what you wanted to do. But... The reason why there's so many of them in this build for a budget deck is because they're great space fillers, they're World Chalice names, so they're not off theme, and the fact that you don't have access to Brilliant Fusion, you want to be summoning Imduk as much as possible at the start of your play to get additional normal summons for World Legacy World Chalice and stuff like that. So having access to these vanillas to be starting your play with alongside Venus to get Shine Balls, which is you know getting to vanillas by itself. That means that you can start your play with a vanilla, you can do a lot of different things with these vanillas if there's multiples in your hands by like normal summoning one, making Link Spider, specialing a vanilla to its uh, arrow, and then making Imduk, and then going for a World Legacy World Chalice play or whatever, or linking away with the Imduk into an Eeb or an Orum, then specialing a Lee out of your hand so you don't waste a normal summon on Lee, and then you get a search for World Legacy World Chalice. There's a lot of things you have access to uh, as far as like making plays with all of these vanillas. There's definitely merits to play all of them, but they just kind of clog in one of the, in some of the more competitively viable decks, and there's just better cards. But because they are World Chalice names, they can all be summoned out of your hand off of your, you know, stepping up into Link monsters, uh, and they're very good for, like, just the other filler cards that you could play in a budgeted version of this deck. So I'm definitely a big advocate of playing maximum the amount of vanillas that you're able to play if you're trying to play this deck on any sort of budget. But 
Carrying on, we obviously would be playing Venus and Shine Ball. Like, this card is cheap. This card is uh, very, very easy to obtain. I should probably say this now. Even though I'm using, like, Max Rarity Forens of some of these cards, um, all of the prices that I'm putting in this video are for the lowest rarity that you can get access to. The cheapest and lowest rarity. I don't think I mentioned that before. But, obviously, you would play Venus at 3 and Shine Ball at 3 in this deck. Shine Ball, again, being a vanilla, contributes to the same reasoning of why I said we're playing all these World Chalice vanillas. But also the fact that Venus by itself gets four monsters. Venus plus the three Shine Balls it puts on the field are four monsters. Four monsters at minimum can make a Link Spider plus a Ningirsu. You go Link Spider with one Shine Ball, you make an Eeb uh, by making like Emduk with a Shine Ball, and then you uh, link the, sh uh, the Venus and the Emduk away into an Eeb under the Link Spider, and then you link the last Shine Ball away into an Emduk. Those two can become Ningirsu under the Link Spider. And so with this inflated World Chalice count that we play, with all these Vanillas, if you're drawing Venus, you should at minimum every play that you have for Venus be able to draw too often Ningirsu absolute minimum and that's fantastic for a budget deck the the ability for a deck to just be able to draw two cards off of opening a card like venus and then just having all these world chalice names in hand and that just fuels your play further uh that's just that's great for a deck like this especially if you're building it on any sort of budgeted standpoint now carrying on uh only two copies of exodius uh this card just kind of clogs when you have all the vanillas when you don't have the brilliant fusion engine in here uh, this card becomes much less, uh, like, impactful because you're not resolving, like, Venus nearly as much as you would uh, with Brilliant Fusion in because, you know, uh, Brilliant Fusion can search for Lee or for Venus depending on what your play string is. Uh, but so, this card's still good for a, uh, a nice recovery option to shovel, like, all your resources back and let you keep going, but otherwise, not really needed. Uh, one copy of Blackwing Go Through the Vague Shadow. Obviously, this card is just more monsters. You want to open with it. This is actually just, com this helps your hands with all the vanillas in them even more, because then you get to make Link Spider without using your normal summon. So, you, like, have Gofu plus, like, two vanillas, you special Gofu. Uh, get your tokens, make a token into Link Spider, use Link Spider special one of the vanillas out of your hand, make that into an Emduk, uh, and then you can go from there into whatever play you want to do, because you've got two normal summons. You can, like, summon Lee, get World Legacy, World Chalice, then immediately tribute summon for it. All that sort of stuff. Oh, also, another thing that I forgot to mention, the fact that you're playing so many World Chalice names because of all these vanillas in here, you're almost always going to be able to dodge Ghost Ogre or Ash Blossom or whatever based off, uh, what play you're making. Like, if you're making, uh, an Ingirsu play, or if you're making a World Legacy World Chalice play, you should always be able to have a monster in your hand that dodges, uh, that allows you to structure your chain link to dodge uh, Ash Blossom from hitting your Ningirsu or your World Legacy World Chalice. So, just things to consider. But, so that's all of the real monsters. The last four monsters in the deck are four hand traps. Uh, you do kind of want to play hand traps in this deck still. You could obviously swap the effect veilers out for other, like, actual traps. Like, if you had Solemn Strikes or something, because those are, like, four to five dollar uh, uh like uh circuit break special edition promos if i remember correctly uh but valor isn't that optimal of a hand trap uh obviously max c is just max c um you would obviously want to be playing better hand traps like ghost ogre or ash blossom or something like that but ghost ogres are like ten dollars minimum a piece per th for the super rares uh these are very cheap and they do work it's not like they don't like do things they're just they're not very good against Spiral, but they're pretty good in other matchups. Like in Pendulum Magicians, you can hit Harmonizing Magician with it. You can Valor Pendulum Sorcerer so they don't trigger popping their scales. Uh, against ABC, you can uh, Valor things like the Ancient Fairy Dragon. That's actually pretty big. Uh, there's a lot of different things that you can do with Valor. So the fact that Hand Traps in this deck have a lot of value because of the fact that they are monsters, so they can be committed to your board presence. Um, if they're not, you know, needed in your hand or they can be discarded for Lee or whatever. That's what makes these cards better than actual traps. Uh, but if you have the ability to upgrade over Effect Veilers or if you have the cards to upgrade over Effect Veilers, I definitely recommend swapping them for either Ghost Ogres or, like, Ash Blossoms if you have access to those cards. But otherwise, those are fine as is. But anyway, I think that's 31 monsters. Now, going on to the spells, three Dark Factory of Mass Production and one World Legacy's Heart. We're playing all the World Chalice names in the main deck. I almost played two of this, but because this is a hard ones per turn, I was kind of uh, hesitant to. It's also searchable, so I mean, it's not really that impactful. This card, though, Dark Factory, this card is the nut. Uh, this In this deck particularly, you just keep throwing cards into plays. You have 12 Vanillas in your deck. You've got the Shine Balls, 
You've got the World Chalice Monsters. Venus plus Dark Factory of Mass Production is a way to get an Ingearsu draw two as well because you just add two Shine Balls back, summon them again, and make them both into Imdooks. And then you put them in the zones next to where your Ningirsu would be summoned. So, like, that's cool as well. It's just it's a nice two-card interaction with Venus. Venus plus Dark Factory. Uh, you go Venus, summon your three Shine Balls, make one into a Link Spider, make one of the, um, make one of the Shine Balls into another Link Spider under that. Then you go into Eve with Venus and the Link Spider, and then you have uh, Dark Factory. Um, well, you play Dark Factory first, get your Shine Balls back, uh, summon them, and then you end up with Eve, Imduk. Um, you end up with Eve, Imduk, Imduk, and like you just do, you do a lot. You do a lot of nonsense that you're able to do. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, mainly these cards are used for the fact that, like I said, you're comboing with all these vanillas. You've got 12 vanillas in your list. You've got three of each World Chalice name. That's the main thing you want to be using Dark Factory for. Uh, it's the best thing that I could find to supplement over Brilliant Fusion, because playing all these vanillas essentially allows you into Imduk Access Pinpoint, which does the same thing Seraph Knight does for you anyway, which is kind of important. But then you have access into just recurring those cards back to your hand. So if you had two vanillas in your hand, you're able to go Link Spider into Imduk and then immediately Dark Factory them back, continue the play as if you lost no cards. Uh, so it's just a little bit better than World Legacy's Heart. And it also just gets really, really good when you get to the Ningirsu phase. Uh, because again, you can dedicate all these vanillas in your hand to making your board and setting up for when you're getting to the Ningirsu. And then you can just Dark Factory two vanillas back to your hand and then get the Ningirsu draw for like two to three. Uh, so there's that to consider as well. But carrying on, Foolish Burial, obviously we'd be playing Soul Charge in a deck like this. Uh, Emergency Teleport because Chosen is in the deck and then two Unexpected Die. I wanted to play three Unexpected Die, uh, but it just it, it clogged with the Gofu as well. And so basically, and also it just didn't really become necessary with the higher number of Vanillas that were in the list uh, with Dark Factory as well because you don't really need to bypass your normal summon for the Vanilla if the Vanilla is already getting you access to Emduk and then you're getting those vanillas back off Dark Factory and World Legacy's Heart. Uh, so that's basically that. So that is the 40 card main deck. For the extra deck, uh, we have just we have it filled out with a bunch of uh, cards as well. Three copies of Mduck, which is standard in competitive World Chalice decks. Uh, two copies of Link Spider, because you want to be doing a lot of stuff with special link vanillas. Uh, this is actually really important in this version. Um, you could cut this to one in a competitive version, but in this version, you want to resolve Link Spider as much as possible. Um, every single turn you have the ability to, you want to be summoning those multiple vanillas out of your hand off of Link Spider. But then carrying on, uh, one copy of Binary Sorceress. This is just a cheaper Proxy Dragon, but I've actually been playing this over Proxy Dragon in my actual main World Chalice deck as well, because it does have an effect that opens up game shots for you. If it's co-linked with two cards, you can make one of your monsters lose half its attack and then give it to her as a quick effect, and that or give it to any other monster, including her. Um, and that's a quick effect, so like you can attack with your big monster, in battle phase and then use this card to half that monster that already attacked and give half that attack to something else so it just makes stuff bigger it just it allows you to close game shots a lot easier uh but then three eeb uh three of this because you want to be able to you know link into monsters that you can then link away with that will summon your world chalices from your hand because there's so many of them and with dark factory and stuff so that's why there's three of this it's become it's it's more of fodder than anything else uh same thing with the double orum uh like Sometimes the second Orum does come up on your uh, on your turn to follow up after you made your big board, but most of the time it doesn't. It's just it's another link two that you can just step up your resources into without losing uh, like link ratings, and you can just link away with this and uh, have a special summon from hand because of Dark Factories, the World Legacy's Heart, and the fact that there's literally 18 World Chalice names in the main deck. Uh, but then Trigate Wizard, only one of this. Uh, there's no reason to play more than one of this because if you're trying to make a field turn one that has two live trigates on it for a negate effect that is you extra link your opponent and every single one of them was link monsters which at this current point in time we do not have a link one that points sideways so that's almost impossible um it's almost impossible to do without something like soul charge as assistance so there's no reason to play more than one uh ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior. This is the most expensive card in the deck list besides the Firewall Dragon. So this is just a, a solid $10 card because it's really good. Uh, if it wasn't that much, you'd obviously be playing more of this uh, just because, again, names, uh, being able to summon it. And this is a good uh, way to deal with uh, with like threats, with removal and stuff like that. Uh, because it is you know, the best removal a Link Monster has currently. Uh, because it doesn't target, and it just sends to Grave. It doesn't target nor destroy. So that's really good. 
Uh, one guy saber, the lightning shadow. Uh, this is important because you can dedicate your resources into it and it points down, so that's important for the uh, for the Trigate Wizard plays and for doing plays to extra link your opponent because you usually extra link your opponent with uh, with a Gaia Saber over here and a Link Spider over here, and you use one Link Spider earlier in the combo sequence to start your play usually with uh, all the vanillas. Uh, so you need the second Link Spider to perform the extra link and you needed another monster that was able to point down, and Guy Saber is just the best one uh, for combo facilitation. So everything I've shown you between the main and extra deck at this point, the 40 card main deck and the 14 card extra deck that you've currently seen, 14 cards of, uh, is $50. The only thing that bumps this up to an $80 deck is that I highly recommend, if you have the resources to do so, to get one Firewall Dragon. This card is most likely not going to be banned. Um, you might get a reprint of it sometime in the near future because it is the protagonist's like ace, ultimate ace monster for Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains. But basically, this card went to one in the OCG. It's probably not going to get banned in the TCG. If anything, it would go to one here as well because it is degenerate at multiples. But if you wanted to play this deck in any capacity and have it be good, Firewall Dragon is kind of necessary because you want to be ending your boards with Trigate Wizard plus a Firewall Dragon while you've also possibly extra linked your opponent. The fact that Firewall Dragon lets you start summoning more monsters out of your hand for your combo is really what the most important aspect of this is. Uh, you really couldn't do a lot of extensive plays without Firewall Dragon in the list uh, just by linking away with these guys because you have nine World Chalice names in this extra deck, so at the most you'll be special summoning nine monsters, and while that does sound like a lot, you usually are not going to be using all nine of those. Um, so Firewall Dragon is just kind of necessary if you're trying to play this deck in a way to win a locals, do somewhat well at a regional or whatever. Uh, so that is what bumps this up to being an $80 deck. But everything before the Firewall Dragon, this entire thing from scratch, is a $50 deck. Firewall is just what tips it over the edge. And Firewall is a card you would need anyway. It's the first card that I would recommend you get to build upon the deck anyway if it was just a, a pure $50 deck. Uh, so it's definitely something that you should probably just go ahead and get access to. It'll give you a better time playing the deck, all that sort of stuff. You don't really need more than one, though, uh, because the deck usually just makes other resources. And then if you were going to upgrade this deck as you got more access into more cards, I would definitely recommend your first upgrade to be the uh, the Kyoto Waterfront and Gamma Seal engine of getting a Gamma Seal, which is about an $8 card, then getting two Kyoto Waterfronts, which should run you about a dollar each. That's a $10 improvement. Because that with Firewall Dragon lets you summon Gamma Seal onto your board turn one and then negate more of your opponent's cards. And then obviously after that I would recommend getting the Brilliant Fusion Engine because then you'd be able to do more consistency things. Now, you may wonder why I included Firewall Dragon in the list and not Brilliant Fusion. If I was going to put $30 worth of cards in it, would it not be better to put Seraph Knight and the Brilliant Fusions and the Lazuli or Garnet in the main deck? Because that is like a $30, $35 package. And it does improve the deck's consistency. I was wrestling with that and I was testing it, but it turns out with Brilliant Fusion in the deck, it did perform a lot better in terms of getting two plays, but the plays that you ended with were not enough to win you the game, because a card like Firewall Dragon backing up Trigate Wizard is actually pretty important. A card like Firewall Dragon allowing you to extra link is pretty important as well, because Firewall Dragon having the up arrow that you can put over here to extra link is actually kind of important as well. So that is why Firewall Dragon ultimately is what made the cut into this deck list, and it's also a card that allows you to have more plays, it allows you to have more recovery, it allows you to have more of a big ending board, it allows you to do more of what this deck is meant to do than Brilliant Fusion provided. So, anyway, that is going to be it for this deck profile. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, if you want me to do more building on budget things, uh, staying around the $50 to $80 mark for other decks, making them as competitively viable as I can as a starting point, then definitely let me know in the comments down below. I've got a couple of other options, uh, or options, not options, ideas for what I want to do for uh, for some other budget decks. But definitely let me know uh, if there's anything partic uh, in particular you'd like to see in the comments down below, as I've already said. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and all the nonsense you usually do. Links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page, as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time, as usual, guys and take care. I'll see you in the next video. But now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertsen, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.